Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here. I've got another DVD Blu-ray review for you. Right, this time it's one of my favourite sci-fi shows. It's no longer on the TV. I don't know whether or not they're going to be doing anything else with the series. I don't know if they're going to do a revamp. I don't know anything that they're actually planning on doing with this. But this is Babylon 5. It was the last best hope for peace. Set in the... Oh, I was just set in... 2257 I think it was kind of similar to the original Star Trek series where you've got it's you've got a cross between the age of what the original Star Trek series was and a space station like what Deep Space Nine did Now this was in 1993 Deep Space Nine was around at the same time so they're very competing sort of markets so there's a Babylon fire station was the fifth of the Babylon five stations, well, fifth of the Babylon stations. One, two, and three were sabotage. Number four vanished without a trace, which you find out what happened to it in here. And five stayed where it was. Now, this box set is the ultimate collection, according to that. It shows you all everything on the bottom there. The DVD release. Right, let's get inside, let's have a look. I'll tell you a little bit more about the show as we go along. Now, I grew up with this, I was kind of, yeah, I wasn't exactly a kid or anything, I was more of an adult. I'm blessed of that now, unfortunately. But this came along, it was just, it blew everything out of, out of the water. It was computer generated, for the time, looked absolutely amazing. But it was kind of the time when the PlayStation came out. So it was that sort of level of graphics. The ships were amazing. It was completely organic. The, the, the style was, was completely its own. And the station looked absolutely stunning as it was. So let's get to the first series. Complete the first series, series one, Signs and Portents. Now, a lot of characters on here. There's a lot of people you will probably know on this. Let me go through a little list of the, the actors. You've got... J. Michael Strudinsky did, was the creator of the series. There's also Bruce Boxlinger, who start, started to come in on series two. Um, I think it was um, Jerry... No, it was Michael O'Hare, who was the commander of the station in series one, and that's him there in the middle, along with a couple of big actors. You'll know... Andreas, oh, I'm going to say his name wrong, Katsulas, who plays Ambassador Jakar. Yeah, let's just get it from memory. You will notice who he is if you're a big Star Trek Next Generation fan. He played Ambassador Tomalock. Oh, did I say Ambassador Tomalock? I meant Commander Tomalock. There you go, spoilers. <laughs> you, you'll get that if you're a Trekkie. I'm sure if you don't, then don't. Definitely another one of these series that you have to go and binge watch. This is absolutely a brilliant series to watch. We have on here, we've got the six discs for series one. Now that looks like it's a bonus disc. I'm ashamed I didn't get the Blu-ray edition of this. I think I, I thought I actually did, but no, that's fine. So a hell of a lot of episodes on here. It, it's a little awkward. It actually shows you. No, oh, it's a little awkward. The, the, the old box types to get things in. That's not very good. I'm going to break that. No, I am. But it shows you series six. Everything's on the inner sleeve. So it tells you what's on the series. All the episodes, all the series. TKO was, a, was actually banned episode 14 because there were fight scenes in it. We get all the way to Babylon Squared. I should think that was where... Was that the one Babylon 4 came into it? Oh, spoilers. Bonus material on the back of this as well. Universe includes computer files, all sorts of gubbins on this. So like I said, this was first released in 1993. So it's, there are better sci-fi things out there. There are better things that people have made for YouTube out there than the special effects on this. But for 1993, this was absolutely top rate, amazing stuff. The storyline behind this was 
lots of alien races came together for peace on the Babylon 5 station. Things happened, there's a, a storyline in the background to do with shadows and, and volons and all sorts of different aliens and stuff. But that develops itself. Series 2 when they have, well, they continue with, with telepaths. With all sorts of different stuff. It just goes... It, it, it was the, the Star Trek of... Well, it, it's a, it was a good attempt at Star Trek. Possibly beyond Star Trek. Possibly a, if it was out now, it would be an absolute classic. But it is... It, I, I don't know. Is it one of those series that you know about but you don't watch? I mean, I've had this box set for quite a while and I've never really opened it up and had a look. See, there's a lot of mythical things about there was a war that happened before the Babylon for Babylon 5 first series that between the humans and the Mimbari and things happened and the Mimbari had a chance to kill every single human and then they stopped and the whole premise of the first there's a mystery going on at the background of why did the Volon stop not the Volans, the Membari. Why did the Membari stop when they could have absolutely have killed everybody? They just turned around and went home. See, there's Bill Mummy as well. He played little, um, oh, Robinson. Yeah, the kid Robinson on the original Lost in Space series. He even appeared in the last series of um, Deep Space Nine. Well, they actually killed him off. It was only in one episode. It was a battle scene in series seven. But yeah, it goes so far. All the characters develop. They change so much. No surrender, no retreat DVD suite. What? Okay, so as I've never been through this, to be honest. Gag reel. So you get, when you get a gag reel on, on series, you know that I've had the cast of having a damn good laugh with each other. See, a series four main characters. Actually, Richard Biggs there played the Doctor. He's actually no longer with us. Neither is Andreas. They both died quite a few years ago. So, to actually do a, a, a newer with the same characters, with the same cast, shall I say, it's not exactly possible, but it is kind of doable, shall we say. But they can have a go at doing it, but, yeah, I don't know. I think all the characters... the, the cast and stuff. It's a good conclusion, this entire box set. There's loads more DVDs than the, just the, the five series in here. Loads and loads of stuff. It ends with sleeping in light. And there's absolutely just... It, it's mind-blowing, some of this. It really went deep into psychological, into battles, into mythology. Not just, just like, we, we have, uh, over here, we have your Egyptians, you have your, your prehistoric era. These had aliens that were older than the dinosaurs, that were charging through the, the, the cosmos faster than anything can possibly, you can possibly dream of. But it ended up with Tracy Scoggins being the last, technically she was the last commander of the Babylon 5 station. Because it ends with her, he becomes a president. Yeah, there's spoilers involved in that. Now, I'm not sure what I need to do next. Aha! Because that doesn't want to be there. Right. In the beginning was the first movie. It does show you everything that happened before Babylon 5, before the series started. There is actually a... Ah, yes. It shows you the preempt towards the series, where the battle between the Membari and the humans came in, and it's... It does a good flashbacks to everything that happened pre-Babylon 5. So at least if you've seen all these and you know the mythos that should have happened, they show you all in a film. Full-length film, 1997. So it was kind of after the series had finished, or just as the series was finishing. 
definitely you have to watch them all in order. Figure out which order they're supposed to come in, get through a series. It's nice to probably see that one, but it does, it shows you too much of what's in these, in the series, before you actually know, because you need to know the characters before you know what happened before them. Right, this is the pilot episode. This needs to be watched first. The Gathering. Now, it's an hour and a half long. It has a little bit of a different theme, little, no, different tone than what the series ended up with. It was the same Babylon Station. It was the same Michael O'Hare, who was a commander. But it, it was different. It was kind of, by this time, by series three, everything was nicely polished. By here, it was a rough and ready. It was a good show. But you think everything was round your car, but it wasn't. It was a lot different. You don't trust people that you know. So it's a good starting point, and then it develops beyond where you'd, you'd, you'd even know about. If you go into these series with thinking Star Trek, go away. Don't bother. It's not a Star Trek. It's just set in the same time, but a different universe, shall we say. Right. There were three movies that they actually made. These are the first two movies, kind of full-length TV movies that they actually made, but they did three others. And in this box set, Third Space was a, as an individual title, completely different. There we go. Completely different storyline, set during the epic five-year arc of Babylon 5. So it's kind of, it fits somewhere in between shall we say but definitely a good damn good watch the station it does it was it a mile and a half long three and a half miles long it's a brilliant series to watch it really was honestly river of souls and call to arms both that again I'm not sure, because obviously Tracy Goggins in this, so this is obviously series five. It's actually Martin Sheen, yeah. Martin Sheen there. Charlie Sheen's dad actually played a character in it. It's, it's, it dragged in actors and actresses from so many different places. It, it, it really was a good sci-fi for everybody to get involved in. So both these having Tracy Goggins, these might have even been set after series five and this being set slap bang in the middle of the third space so lovely artwork on these i mean the ships the star the star furies absolutely brilliant and they kind of look the the, the cross section there they, they're kind of x-wing but they're not they are designed to be like that but there's a cabin in the front weapons on either side engine on the back of it absolutely brilliant brilliant fighter fighter jet shall we say right legend of the rangers let's jump onto this one shall we this was a full-length movie but it was supposed to be a pilot to a new series that they were trying to do now it had andreas reprising his role on for this and it was a it was a good series they just tried getting a ship the new ship there for the Rangers. And the Rangers are obviously people that, if you don't know the series, you'll not have a clue, but they were, they kind of twisted the, oh no, they didn't. They helped out a lot of people in need, but these were a ragtag group of, of yeah, ex-military, ex-whatever, Mimbari there. It's kind of, I think, similar-ish to what I'm expecting the new Picard series to be. Because that looks like it's just a ragtag crew being thrown together. But a full, full length, it was a pilot for the series, but they never got round to doing the series because it just wasn't picked up by anybody. So they kept it as a full length movie. It's definitely, it's definitely worth a watch, but obviously it's after everything in, in there. Right, The Lost Tales. Now, I'd like this because this was done quite a few years after everything had been forgotten and they were done, Babylon 5 finished. I think this was short stories. 
from Babylon 5. They kind of rebuilt, re re rebuilt, refilmed a lot of scenes that they, they kind of tormented us with over the years, but brought it into a, a, a TV movie again. Yeah, this was a really good actual episode, original movie. It was just, just straight after, it just trying to get us back into trying to have more Babylon 5, which it didn't do, unfortunately. It was kind of the, I think this was actually the last effort of the Babylon 5 series here. It was actually in 2007, so it was 14 years after the original series started. So, good attempt, brought it back, the original, some of the original characters. He was a, was he a techno mage? Hmm, I'm not sure. Yeah, Techno Mage. When a Techno Mage shows him a glance of the future Earth destroyed and a devastating Centauri assault. And I'll not spoil it anymore, but quite a good film. Quite a good film indeed. But that's kind of the end of. But there was one other series that came out. This is Crusade. Now, it kind of bridges a little bit. There was a there was something happened on Earth where there was, I think it was the end of the war or something, and the, the, the shadows destroyed Earth, or they, they corrupted Earth, they, they, they poisoned the atmosphere, I think. And what Crusade's idea was, their ship was called the Excalibur, and they went out and tried to find who, what, and how, to counteract what had happened to the atmosphere and, and bring back Earth as it was. There's only Tracy Scoggins actually reprise her role as the commander in the captain of this. Gary Cole, we've seen Gary Cole before in a quite a few things. I remember him being in a, a, the, the ballad of Ricky Bobby, played um, Will Farrell, well, Ricky Bobby's dad. Absolutely, he's a good actor, really good American actor. But not many of the original cast actually appeared in this but it was a full series full really good series that they did but it only lasted one series they never concluded it they never actually got to the end massive massive ship here the Excalibur but it was a really good show and a really good attempt to end everything I don't know whether or not Earth actually got restored and all I need to I need really need to get these back out again don't I and watch them properly but a good show to get into and it, it wasn't bad it was just lacking that little spark that the Babylon 5 series did I mean most of these were just they were attempt well not those those two were yeah showing events that were in the series that was the original pilot so that's in the series all those are classic brilliant Babylon 5 they all attempted to re kindle the fire that was the Babylon 5 project and unfortunately he died a death eventually and that was it that was the end of Babylon 5 I mean I'd love to see some more Babylon 5 but like I said nothing's scheduled nothing scheduled if you need to binge watch a massive series get into this if you're a sci-fi nut, if you like stuff like The Expanse, the, th the 100, the any Justice League sort of DC universe, any Avengers, anything that you want to watch and you have you don't like Star Trek Discovery, then fine, off you go, get into this. This is a good series to get yourself in and get your teeth really into a new universe. But, yeah, I need to get this out myself, to be honest rewatch from the beginning so thanks for watching i hope it's inspired you to go out there on i'm sure these are on a on a, a streaming site somewhere if not go down to amazon find them on there buy them from there tell them i sent you if they say who then yeah if they don't then they might send me a voucher you never know <coughs> i don't think they would actually but anyway thanks for watching i hope you've you've enjoyed that i've enjoyed digging these back out again it's it, it puts a lot of memories in your head so, actually, with the Babylon 5, there was 110 episodes and six films for the original series and then the extra parts over and over. But it's it just, yeah, it won so many awards, this, this the Babylon 5 series did. It was absolutely brilliant. Get into it. 
get it watched, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.